Let's start with the bent roof truss example. The bent roof truss shown below carries a live load of 3 kilonewtons per meter along its horizontal length. Just to clarify, the horizontal length is the 10 meters, which is the full horizontal length of this truss. This example demonstrates that built-up members, that is, rigid members constructed from various subcomponents, can often be treated as a single component without reference to the subcomponents. Essentially, what this means is that this is a bent roof truss that is made up of all these interconnected members, but for the purpose of this analysis, we can just consider it to be a solid block, which will simplify this problem. This example also shows how we can work with an angled boundary condition, as we can see that point A is angled. The first question we're asked is what are the reactions? Notice which dimensions are needed for these calculations and which are not. We should start by drawing our coordinate system and then draw the reaction forces at each point. Remember that a roller support resists translation in the y direction and the pin support resists translation in the x and y direction. Let's also turn that distributed load into a point load by taking the force applied, which is 3 kN per meter, times the distance it spans, which is 10 meters, giving us 30 kN. We place it at point E because it's the center of the distance. Now that we have all the force reactions drawn, we can solve for them. Let's take the moment about C since we want to eliminate as many unknowns as possible. Before we take the moment about C, we must break AN into its X and Y components. Redrawing that part of the diagram can help us take a closer look. Creating a right angle triangle inside the current triangle and drawing AX and AY will help us as well. Knowing that the angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees, we know that this angle is 50 degrees. We also know that AN is perpendicular to this line, creating a 90 degree angle. That means that this angle must be 40 degrees. We can now solve for AX and AY using SOCA TOA. Sine 40 equals AX over AN, giving you AX equals AN sine 40. Cos 40 equals AY over AN, giving you AY equals AN cos 40. We can also add the X and Y components onto the original diagram. Now we can write out the moment equation. Remember, moment is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance. The moment about C equals zero, which equals positive AX times 2.3 meters plus negative AY times 10 meters plus positive 30 kilonewtons times 5 meters. You then get 0 equals positive AN sine 40 times 2.3 plus negative AN cos 40 times 10 plus 150. If you rearrange the equation, you'll find that AN equals 24.3 kilonewtons. This is the actual force of AN and not the components. Now that we have AN as well as the components for AN, we can use the remaining equilibrium equations to solve for CX and CY respectively. The net force in the X direction equals zero in equilibrium, which equals AX plus CX, substituting in AX for AN sine 40, as well as remembering that AN is equal to 24.3 kilonewtons, you then get CX equals negative 15.6 kilonewtons. Remember that the negative just means we assume the wrong direction of the force. The net force in the y direction equals zero in equilibrium, which equals AY subtract 30 kilonewtons plus CY. Substituting in AY for AN cos 40, and remembering that AN equals 24.3 kilonewtons, we get CY equals 11.4 kilonewtons. Now that we've found all the reaction forces in this structure, we can move on to the next question. Is the principle of concurrent forces satisfied by your answer? If you recall, the principle of concurrent forces is where all the forces must intersect at a common point and only applies to two or three forces acting on a body. 
This diagram below will help explain a method we can use to see if all three forces meet. If we refer to our last diagram, we can see that the last angle to complete the right angle triangle is 50 degrees. Using the Z pattern, we can see that this angle here is also 50 degrees, which means that this angle is 40 degrees, assuming this creates a 90 degree angle. One method we can use to see if all the forces intersect is to compare the height of which AN and the point load intersect, as well as find the height of which C and the point load intersect. If they are the same height, then that means they satisfy the principle of concurrent forces. Let's call the height line P. To find the height for the left side of the diagram, we can use Sokotoa to solve for P. Remember that we're finding distance, not force, which means we have to use the 5 meters and not AN. You get tan 40 equals 5 meters divided by P. Rearranging, you get P equals 5.9 meters. To find the height for the right side of the diagram, we can use CX and CY as distances instead of forces as they are also the ratio of force C. Using the ratio of 11.4 over 15.6, or also known as 19 over 26, we can multiply it by the distance to see what the height would be in 5 meters. So P equals 19 over 26 times 5 meters. Don't forget to add 2.3 meters after as the right side of the diagram is slightly higher than the left. You then get P equals 5.9 meters, showing that this system does satisfy the principle of concurrent forces. What do you notice about the vertical reactions? How do they compare with those produced by a horizontal beam with non-angled supports? Currently, we only know CY as we never really found out where AY was. We can find out by using our equilibrium equations. The net force in the Y direction is equal to zero, which is equal to negative 30 kilonewtons plus CY plus AY. Remembering that CY is 11.4 kilonewtons, we get AY equals 18.6 kilonewtons. We can see that the vertical reactions are not equal due to point A being angled. If we were to compare it to the same system, but with a straight beam and non-angled supports, the reaction forces for AY and CY should be equal. If you take the moment about C, it equals zero, which equals negative AY times 10 meters plus positive 30 kilonewtons times 5 meters as the point load is in the center of the beam. This gives you an answer of 15 kilonewtons. Using the equilibrium equation, we can see that the net force in the y direction is equal to zero, which is equal to AY subtract 30 kilonewtons plus CY. Substituting in 15 kilonewtons for AY, you get CY equals 15 kilonewtons. This tells us that the reaction force of AY equals the reaction force of CY if the supports were not angled. In the example we previously did, the reaction forces are not equal because that system had an angled support. What is the effect of the angled support? Would it be better if the support were designed so its reactions were vertical? Why or why not? So the effect of the angled support in conjunction with the elevated beam is to reduce the overall load on the far side of the structure by increasing the load that the close side bears. So A took more of the load of the structure than C, since A is angled. Just to clarify, A is the close side that carries more weight than C.